Hey, what's up Spray Foamers? This is Aaron here again with CJ Spray with some more tech review. Today we're going to talk about the integrated, the new Reactor 2 integrated Elite system. Um, I was recently out on site with some guys were spraying polyurea with an EXP2i um, and he was getting a bunch of heat codes and they were all over the place. Uh, I got one here was a T8BE and another one is a T8DE. Uh, a T8BE reads no temperature rise heat exchanger B. The other one T8DA no temperature rise A. So with that EXP2 that's got a booster heater on it so it's got your heat exchangers for the coolant heat as well as a booster heater. So I kind of noticed that his codes were all over the place and you know we switched around some RTD sensors and stuff over the phone. When I got out on site, I turned it on and we were heating it up to about 155 across the board. So we turned it on, all the heaters, and it heated up to about 135. The other side heated up to about 115 or so. And then it just stopped right there. And then after a while, if it doesn't rise up to where your set point is, it's going to give you a code. Um, and these, the difference between these two is one of them's a code for a heat exchanger and the other one's a code for the booster heater. So you will get an individual code, A or B heat exchanger or A or B booster heater. So what I did, I went in to his setup mode on his interface and I turned off or I disabled his booster heat. And then we turned the heaters back on again and I set them down. I brought the levels down to about 120. So we turned it on and it didn't heat up at all. Didn't move, not one single degree. So remember now we're just using the heat exchangers because I disabled the booster heater. So by doing that, you can kind of alleviate that out of the equation, you know. So before when we had the booster heater on, um, that's the only thing that was heating the material and that by itself isn't capable of getting it up to that kind of temperature that we were, that we needed for polyurea. Um, so <clears throat> once we found that out, you know, we were looking in the sight glass, noticed no flow. Um, and that system is very tricky with the way the coolant system runs up and down and all throughout. So we had an air bubble in there and the pump was just trying to pump air and it was not working obviously. So on our Ames trailer, what you can do is drop the tongue of that trailer down as low as you can. You might need a floor jack or something to get it actually off the pedestal and get it down as far as you can. So the trailer is going to be sitting like this. The high end would be where we put a little petcock valve in a 90 degree elbow and that's coming right out of the red Grunfoss coolant pump. So when you tip it down like that, you're going to draw the air upwards towards our petcock valve that we put in. So if you have a guy right there, you can bleed that air out and then have another guy filling the metal canister up top. <clears throat> and you'll see it as you open that petcock valve, you'll get air and coolant out. And the coolant level in the canister will, I mean, you'll see a notice, it'll be a direct relationship. So you'll have to have a guy up there adding coolant in as you're bleeding air out to displace that space that's in the system. Okay, so we did that. We got the air out. The pump kicked, and then you immediately see coolant flow flying through that sight glass. Um, we turned it back on again, and everything worked fine. So another quick thought is if you're trying to, if you're spraying polyurea and you're trying to heat it up to 155, 160 and say your material is at 60 or 50, 60, 70 degrees in the drums, after so much time of the heaters not being able to reach your set point, it's going to give you a code. So if you're trying to heat your chemical up that hot, you're going to have to do it in stages. Okay. So bring it down. Get it up to, set it at 110, okay, for your A and B. Let that catch up, then bring it up to 130, 140, let that catch up, and then go to your 
kind of your end temperature where you're going to be spraying at. But if you try to heat up to 160 and you're at 60 down here in your drums, after so long, you know, if, if that temperature doesn't rise immediately and match your set point, the machine is going to give you an error code. And that's what it's meant to do. So just think of that. Not as much of a problem with foam because we're not heating it that hot. But polyurea, just incrementally raise your temperatures until you get it all recirced and everything is nice and warm in the drums and you should be good to go. So a few quick notes on the Reactor 2 Elite Integrated EXP2i.